inflation will peak above 8% this year, higher than forecast in this week's federal budget, according to ANZ, heaping pressure on interest rates and making the narrow path to an economic soft landing more fraught. The big four banks' forecast for headline inflation is also higher than the Reserve Bank of Australia's best guess, and came as Commonwealth Bank issued a pointed critique of the RBA and its leadership team. The Reserve Bank Board is tasked with using interest rates to either boost or suppress demand to manage Australia's inflation level. But CBA on Friday accused the Reserve Bank of being a closed shop and called for an overhaul of the board and the monthly decision-making processes for determining interest rate changes. The current structure of the RBA board is not compatible with generally accepted best practice for boards in Australia, CBA Chief Economist Stephen Halmerick said, and called for more expert voices in decisions. Mr. Halmerick also cited the messy end to the bank's policy of keeping short-term bond yields low, known as yield curve control, which he said damaged its reputation, and its communication over rate expectations. ANZ head of Australian economics David Plank said despite the RBA's contrary suggestion, this week's 32-year high 7.3% inflation results suggested Australia was no different to the rest of the world. Australia's inflation is catching up with the pack, Mr. Plank said in a note to clients. The inflation backdrop all but guarantees that next week's RBA communication will be hawkish. The critical aspect of Tuesday's statement is whether it refers to the board wanting to keep the economy on an even keel. We don't think the RBA is ready to abandon that objective. ANZ is tipping a 0.25 percentage point increase in the official interest rate at next week's Melbourne Cub Day meeting with four further increases to a peak of 3.85% to bring inflation back to the 2-3% target band. Pointed Critique In a submission to an independent review of the Reserve Bank of Australia, CBA, through its chief economist, said the target band should not be altered and had been successful in controlling the level of inflation over time. But while Mr. Halmerick did not want a change to a key policy underpinning the RBA's role, He called for an overhaul of the bank's board and the way it comes to decisions on monetary policy. In particular, CBA wants to see more monetary policy experts to balance out business leaders and public servants. A widely accepted structure for an effective board is for the board to have nine members in a 3-3-3 model. Private sector economists should also be allowed to present to the board's monthly meeting and there should be more opportunities for outsiders to rotate through the bank's senior ranks to provide different perspectives. There is a need to facilitate the two-way flow of people into and out of the RBA and the private sector. This could be done at multiple levels across the RBA, Mr. Halmerick said, adding that if the opportunity arose, senior executives, such as the deputy governor, could come from outside. On the bank's yield curve control policy, he said the program continued longer than necessary and in the end contributed to market volatility and uncertainty about the policy outlook. While on the governor's statements interest rates would remain at a record low until 2024, CBA's chief forecaster said that should never happen again. Forward guidance should only be based on a set of preconditions related to meeting the inflation objective and never calendar-based, either implicitly or explicitly, Mr. Halmerick said. Data shows that 80% of people watching my videos are not subscribed. Remember subscribing is free it only takes a couple of seconds and you can unsubscribe at any time. Please help me and my channel by subscribing. Now back to the video.